Today was the final day you could have gotten Junkanoo tickets for the Boxing Day Parade at the Kendall GL Isaacs Gym, but you can get those tickets up to 12.01 on Wednesday morning when the parade is set to begin at Festival Place downtown Nassau. Now, once you get those tickets, the next thing you need to know is how do you get to your seat as quickly as possible. Here's Chairman of the JCNP, Silbert Ferguson, on that. All of the persons who are sitting in sections I, J, K, and L, they will all enter through Bank Lane. All of the gates are in this area for this major section of the parade. All of the persons who are sitting uh, in sections A, B, C, and D, they will be able to enter the parade from Frederick Street and Charlotte Street, north and south. There are gates on either side of the road. If you are sitting in sections E, F, G, and H, you are to enter the parade through Charlotte Street's north and south or Parliament Street north and south and you will pick up the gate as to where your seats are. Now there is a slight change to the way the tickets will be processed here Ferguson on that. Marshall will just take their tickets, they will just remove the official copy of that ticket and then it will be placed into this jacket like this okay and while a person is here at the parades it is imperative that they wear their identification the entire time the police has been advised that any person not wearing their ID lanyard and jacket with their ticket attached they will be removed from the seats, whether they've paid for it or not, because we are providing this for everybody for the safety of these parades. Meantime, Assistant Commissioner of Police responsible for uniformed operations, Leon Bethel, met with senior officers of the force today to explain the major operation that they'll conduct downtown to police the parade. Make sure to welcome them with uh, perks. Teams of officers to control these areas to make sure that the areas where people are standing, uh, people get frustrated at some point or another. Uh, that sufficient police officers are there to control these um, these points. In addition, the access points is our, I would say, our second line of defense because our first line of defense is the arteries going into Bay Street. The second is the access points where anyone try to get through we will be um, screened now battle says the prolific offenders looking to cause trouble will be dealt with at this parade price prolific offenders who unveil for uh, um, uh, crimes against a person to turn them away to make sure that there's not a potential for them to cause problems because if you are a prolific offender we know that you will commit crime we cannot allow you to go through where decent people are to, to cause mischief. We will put a stop to that right there, at, I would say, at the border to make sure that you, you watch John Kuno another time when you've proven that you have uh, 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 reformed uh, and, and then we will allow you to. The anticipation is building in just a matter of hours. The pulsating sounds of the goatskin drums will come alive on Bay Street, marking the start of the Junkanoo season on Bay Street. Tonight, we take a look at the Valley Boys organization as they prepare for the big dance. Here's to Don Davis. They came in a disappointing fourth place in the Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade last year, but come Boxing Day morning, the Valley Boys say they are not taking any prisoners. Firstly, I can tell you we're not going to finish fourth this year. Uh, we've We've done our homework. Uh, we're well prepared. As you can see from the costumes that are here, we're completed. These costumes are three-dimensional. They're not flat. There are no shortcuts. Um, we take our, our, our craft very serious. And you would see that the details in these costumes would have taken a lot of time. Adderley and designer of the Valley Boys, Herbert Bain, not only gave us a sneak peek of what we can expect from the Valley Boys in a matter of hours, but also told us the significance of this year's theme. We thought that with us celebrating our 40th anniversary next year as an independent country. It would only be fitting that we start by paying tribute to our head of state, um, which is Queen Elizabeth. She's been our head of state obviously since we've become independent, 
and we thought that this would be a good time to kick off our 40th anniversary celebrations. This piece in particular, um, in 1975, Bob Marley, a local Caribbean guy, um, um, went and he paid tribute, musical tribute to Royal Highness, and one of the songs that he sang was No Woman No Cry. And so that's the name of this piece. And we, if you look at the piece behind us, if you look behind us, you'll see um, that's a lion. Bob Marley be riding that lion. And we say it's out, um, nestled within the British coat of arms. As one of the more dominant Junkanoo groups, the Valley Boys say breaking out of the gate six on Boxing Day morning is not an issue for them. When asked about the mood of their members this time around, Deputy Chairman Jason Batts Minnis says bittersweet. Um, the number, uh, it's kind of iffy. You know, it's pretty late. If you come out pretty early, you'd be tired, standing around, watching the parade. But, uh, you know, the excitement of Bay Street kind of takes control. Uh, we're very excited. We think we've put ourselves in a position to win both parades. Uh, we, we, I mean, the, the, the atmosphere and the attitude in the group is at an utmost high. Um, I mean, you could just, just walking around the shack, you can see guys are comfortable, they're well rested. It's a number the Valley Boys say will not only give them the upper hand, but will draw more visitors into a cultural expression Bahamians everywhere eagerly await. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. The Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas spreading some Christmas cheer today. The management and staff here at the corporation donated some much-needed funds to the Salvation Army, which will hopefully aid persons in need and bring them a little holiday cheer. The presentation was made to the Salvation Army here in the boardroom with BCB Chairman William Thompson and Major Oral Morris, Divisional Secretary for the Salvation Army. On behalf of the wonderful staff here at ZNS, uh, you made an appeal to us uh, for help for, from, our, uh, from our staff and they graciously on their night we set aside to come together to celebrate as staff. They brought uh, gifts uh, that we want to present to you now to help with the work of the Salvation Army. We know the great work you are doing there mm -hmm. and we thank God for the, the, the part you play in making this country better, helping those who are really needy in our country. And this is just the beginning of what this group of wonderful people will do. Uh, I think they'll convince in their hearts that they will do it once a year to make a presentation <laughs> to you. So on behalf of our general manager, our deputy general manager, and all these lovely people here at ZNS, we want to present you this little gift as a token to help with the work that you do at the Salvation Army. Thank you so much, and I want to, on behalf of the Salvation Army and our Divisional Commander, Major Lester Ferguson, who is um, overseas at this time, I just want to say a very uh, sincere thanks to all of you for coming together and, and for making this donation um, to us, and I can assure you that it will be used to the honor and glory of God and to the betterment of